I speak a great deal about the Coyonesi and their takeover of the Sicilian Mafia, which took place in the 80s. I've recently discovered some interesting facts, and I wanted to share them. As we know, besides territorial control, the Coyonesi wanted total control of the drug trafficking, and most of their brutality took place after the arrest of Luciano Ligio in May of 1974. At that time, Totorina began calling the shots. The Coyonesi possessed strength in numbers, but was financially weak. What money they did make came from kidnapping, although they were breaking the rules of the commission and Cosa Nostra. Tommaso Buscetta and Antonino Cadoron, who both cooperated, basically said the same thing, as follows. The commission decided no more kidnapping in Sicily can take place. They wanted to prevent any hostility from the public, but more importantly, more attention from the police. So not only did the Colonesi break the commission rule, but their potential kidnap targets were close to or associated to the bosses in Palamo. And besides money, their objective was to discredit the power of the Palamo bosses. Imagine how it looked. Associates and friends of Badalamente, Montande, and Inzerillo were being kidnapped. It was a bad look. Prior to the kidnappings, the people in Palamo felt the bosses were their protectors and looked up to them. One of the first to be kidnapped was Pino Vassallo, the son of a prominent Palamo builder, Francesco Vassallo, who happened to be close to both Badalamente and Bontante, a kidnapping that Luciano Ligio was involved in because he wasn't incarcerated yet. I've often wondered, if Ligio wasn't out of the picture and still calling the shots, would the Colonesi still have waged war on Palamo in 1981? And the answer is yes. Adding insult to injury, Badalamente and Bontante were unable to negotiate Vassallo's release. The Coyonesi held him for five months until the ransom was paid. Next, they kidnapped an entrepreneur, Luciano Casina, a son of one of the most richest men in Palamo. Again, this kidnapping was aimed at Badalamente and Bontante, who was close to Casina. Of greater significance, at the time, Badalamente and Bontante were arrested. The Coyonesi held Casina for six months and received a multi-million dollar ransom. It's been reported that when Badalamente and Bontante were released from prison, they were pissed over the kidnapping. Luciano Ligio intervened and was able to calm things down. However, after Ligio's arrest in 74, Toto Riina took his place on the commission and soon after committed the ultimate affront. In 1975, the Coyonesi kidnapped Luigi Colio, the father-in-law of Nino Salvo, a wealthy tax collector in Sicily who was very close to Bontante. Taking disrespect to a higher level, Nino Salvo was a member of the Palamo Mafia. For Colio's ransom, the Coyonesi wanted a large amount of money, some of which they received. At one point, Bontante attempted to have Colio released, but instead of turning him over, the Coyonesi killed him instead. Subsequently, Bontante tried getting Colio's body back, but the Coyonesi denied being involved in his kidnapping. With the money from their kidnapping campaign, the Coyonesi used it in construction investments, but most of it was used to buy loyalty from people that they would need when they declared war. If you notice, the people the Coyonesi kidnapped were not only connected to the Palamo bosses, but more importantly, they were the money guys. In court documents regarding Colio's murder, it describes the Colionesi's message as being, business, the big ones, must also pass through our hands. The victims of the kidnapping were people the bosses in Palamo used for bribes to win construction contracts and to further enrich themselves. It was common knowledge, but Dalamente, Montante, and Inzerillo became extremely wealthy with drug trafficking. This alone caused envy with the Colionesi. Adding construction money to the equation only heightened the Colionesi's bitterness. The kidnappings had a dual purpose. First, Obviously, they wanted to cause embarrassment, as the victims were all close to the bosses in Palamo. As for the money they made, it helped them build a war chest. The mistake that the Palamo bosses made was as soon as the first kidnapping took place, they should have plotted on taking out the top bosses for the Colonesi. Had they struck first, they would have won the war. There's an old saying, the fish stinks from the head down. At that time, the head was Totorin, and that's who they should have took out. As an added slap to the bosses in Palamo's face, when the Coyonesi declared war on them, Nino Salvo and his cousin Ignazio Salvo, also a member of the Palamo Mafia, both switched sides and gave their allegiance to the Coyonesi. 
I found this information interesting as it shows another side of the Koyanesi strategy, which they had plenty of, and I wanted to share it.